subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shreya Savage. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 3rd of November. Cannot afford laxity. New crisis can come. Warns Indian Prime Minister Modi during COVID review meet. Taliban bans use of foreign currencies in Afghanistan. and hindus across nepal honor dogs to mark kukur tihar festival during diwali and now for all the details indian prime minister narendra modi on wednesday while holding a review meeting with senior officials from districts that are lagging in the vaccination coverage said if we become lax a new crisis can come despite covering the milestone of 1 billion vaccinations He said there is a need to take the COVID-19 inoculation drive door to door now. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday said if we become lax a new crisis can come as he held a virtual review meeting with a number of chief ministers and senior officials of more than 40 districts across the country where the COVID-19 vaccination coverage has been sluggish. India has administered more than 1 billion doses. However, only 30% of Indians have got the two mandatory doses. PM Modi told the administrators that they have a major challenge of rumor and misconception among people and they need to use technology and social infrastructure in effective communication for 100% vaccine coverage. There is a need to take the COVID-19 inoculation drive door to door now, he said. एक बिलियन के बाद अगर हम थोड़े से भी ढीले पड़ गए तो नई संकट आ सकता है और इसलिए हमारे यहाँ तो कहा जाता है कि बीमारी और दुश्मन को कभी कम नहीं आंकड़ा चाहिए उसको आखिरी अंत तक लड़ाई लड़नी पड़ती है और इसलिए मैं चाहूंगा कि हमें थोड़ा सा भी ढीलापन लाने नहीं देना है India logged 11,903 new COVID-19 cases on Wednesday, taking the active case load to 151,209, the lowest in 252 days. The Modi government on Wednesday launched Har Ghar Dastak, a month-long door-to-door vaccination campaign aiming to inoculate the entire population in poor-performing districts. Indian authorities on Tuesday handed over 10 fishermen to Pakistan who had been arrested in western Gujarat state for illegally crossing over to the Indian territory. Fishermen from both the countries frequently strain to each other's territory and then end up spending years in jails. Indian government on Tuesday released 10 Pakistani fishermen who had been arrested in western Gujarat state for illegally crossing over to the Indian territory. They were brought by the Gujarat police to the border on Monday night. These fishermen were handed over to Pakistani rangers by India's paramilitary BSF border security force personnel at the Atari Vaga border after their sentences were completed. Today, the Bharat Sarkar has released Pakistan ke rehne wale Pak National 10 mashwari jo ke अप्रॉक्सीमेट चार पाँच साल पहले आ, पाकिस्तान समंदर में गए मछली पकड़ने के लिए मछली पकड़ते हुए ये अपनी हद से भारत की हद में दाखिल हुए जहाँ पे इनको राउंड अप किया गया वाइल द पाकिस्तानी फिशर मैन एक्सप्रेस जॉय ऑन लिविंग फॉर देयर होम लैंड मैनी होप अदर्स वुड बी रिलीज सून सर हम बहुत शुक्रवार है जो हमारे को भारत सरकार ने हमारे को तोहफे में छोड़ा India and Pakistan frequently arrest fishermen as there is no clear demarcation of the maritime border in the Arabian Sea the longest coastlines between the two fishermen do not have boats equipped with technology to know their precise location and mostly ignore rules while netting their catch In news from Pakistan Daily commuters in Pakistan's Karachi city have expressed dismay over an increase in transport fares after frequent hike in fuel prices this month which has shaken their domestic budgets. Locals claimed that they have lost all hope in the government which is least bothered about their sufferings amid an all-time high inflation. 
commuters in Pakistan's Karachi city have expressed anger over a rise in public transport fears amidst frequent fuel price hike and all-time high inflation in Pakistan, which has shaken the domestic budgets and made their lives difficult. After a third consecutive increase in fuel price in just two months, the price of petrol now stands at Rs 137.79 per litre, while the diesel costs 110.26 rupees per litre in Pakistan. Commuters and locals claim that they have lost all their hope in the government, which is least bothered about their sufferings. Meanwhile, the opposition parties, including the Pakistan People's Party, have continued to hold a series of protests across the country against inflation demanding Prime Minister Imran Khan's resignation. The government has, however, pinned the rise in inflation as a global phenomenon. The Taliban has announced a complete ban on the use of foreign currency in Afghanistan, a move sure to cause further disruption to an economy pushed to the brink of collapse by the abrupt withdrawal of the international support. The surprise move came hours after militant group Islamic State attacked a military hospital in central Kabul, killing at least 25 people. The Taliban announced a complete ban on the use of foreign currency in Afghanistan on Tuesday, saying in a statement that the economic situation and national interests require that all Afghans use Afghan currency in their every trade. The use of U.S. dollars is widespread in Afghanistan's markets, while border areas use the currency of neighboring countries such as Pakistan for trade. The move is likely to cause further disruption to an economy pushed to the brink of collapse by the abrupt withdrawal of international support since the ouster of the Western-backed government in August. The Taliban government is pressing for the unfreezing of billions of dollars of assets overseas, while the drought-stricken nation faces a cash crunch, mass starvation and a new migration crisis. Although Western powers want to avert a humanitarian disaster in Afghanistan, they have refused to officially recognize the Taliban government. The surprise move came hours after militant group Islamic State attacked a military hospital in central Kabul after two heavy explosions at the site killing at least 25 people and wounding 50. The attack followed a string of bombings by the group which has emerged as the biggest threat to Taliban control of Afghanistan. The Taliban, which stormed to power in Afghanistan this year after ousting the Western-backed government, has allowed all boys and younger girls back to class, but has not let girls attend secondary school. Girls and young women are still deprived of education in the country and are desperate to get back to class. Meanwhile, the Taliban government has said it would announce good news soon but urge the international community to help it fund the process as most external aid has been halted. 20-year-old university student Hawa sits by the window in her Kabul home and pours over a book to fill her days and keep her mind occupied. Like hundreds of thousands of other Afghan girls and young women, Hawa, a Russian literature undergraduate, has not been allowed to return to her studies since the Taliban seized power in mid-August. And like many of her peers, she is feeling a mixture of frustration and anger that her aspirations to study and work are being thwarted. The hardline Islamist Taliban movement, which stormed to power this year after ousting the Western backed government, has allowed all boys and younger girls back to class but has not let girls attend secondary school. Most public universities are not functioning at all, or only partially. Across town, 17-year-old Seher is also struck at home. 
She wants to become an engineer, but for now at least, has to learn at home as best she can. ام سینفیایم باشه، ام رای مستادای ما دوباره درسای ما شروع شود که بتونیم به درسای ما ادامه بدیم تا که پیشرفت کنیم بتونیم به کشور ما خدمت کنیم Afghanistan's Taliban government said it would announce good news soon on older girls being allowed to go back to school, but urged the international community to help it fund the process as most external aid has been halted. Ensuring rights for women and girls has been one of the most sensitive issues facing the Taliban since they seized power in August, with international bodies demanding proof they were being respected before any discussion of formal recognition of the new government. Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deuba thanked his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi for providing vaccines against the coronavirus disease in a timely manner to his country as they held talks on the sidelines of the COP26 climate conference in Glasgow on Tuesday. According to India's Foreign Ministry, the two leaders noted the excellent cooperation between India and Nepal during the pandemic, particularly through the supply of vaccines, medicines and medical equipment from India to Nepal, as well as by ensuring the flow of goods across the borders. Deuba also thanked Modi for India's continued support for Nepal's development endeavours post-earthquake recovery and expected similar kind of support and cooperation in the future too. He sought India's support and cooperation to open up three new air routes over India, Nepal's Foreign Secretary Bharat Raj Podyal told the Kathmandu Post. The new air routes would facilitate international flights to proposed international airports in Bhairwa, Pokhara and Nijkar, according to officials. Deuba also requested India's support for early resumption of export of chemical fertilizers to Nepal as both sides are waiting to sign a formal deal. The meeting between the two leaders was the first since Deuba was appointed as Prime Minister by the Supreme Court of Nepal in an extraordinary judicial intervention in July. Immersed in festive spirit, people across Nepal and India have begun celebrations for Diwali, the festival of lights with fervor. Hindus across Nepal on Wednesday honoured their dogs with baths, garlands and special treats on the second day of the five-day-long festival of lights called Tehar. Hindus across Nepal honour their dogs with baths, garlands and special treats on Wednesday to mark Kukur Tihar, the second day of the five-day Tihar festival during which animals are worshipped across the Himalayan nation. A special event was organized at the Police Canine Training Center in Kathmandu on the occasion to honor dogs of police canine units for their contribution in catching the criminals. The event included competitions and obedience displays such as navigating obstacles, high jumps and runs. Devoured Hindus consider the dog to be the messenger of Yamraj, the god of dead, and believe that worshipping the animal makes it happy. Meanwhile, devotees in Piagraj city in India's northern Uttar Pradesh state flocked to temples to offer prayers to the Hindu monkey god Hanuman on Wednesday as they marked Hanuman Jayanti on the eve of Diwali, the festival of lights. The festival marks the birth anniversary celebrations of Hanuman, who is considered to be very wise, strong and immortal. A procession was also taken out by devotees in the temple town, where devotees carried the idol of Hanuman on the auspicious occasion. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.